guys calm down, please? So unbeknownst to you guys, um, we have actually already started moving into quadratic. When, as soon as I gave you, as soon as I gave you this, x plus 2 times x minus 7, and we actually multiplied it out, we got x squared minus 5x minus uh, 14, right? Wait, Gary, what is this lecture called? What? What's that? What? I don't get this it. This isn't actually part of the lecture. I'm just kind of, I just oh, wanted to I review know. since. Wait, Gary, what? Why did you get 5x? What? Where did you get 5x? Oh, oh, negative outside, negative 7x plus 2x is negative 5x. I just, I just did it in my head. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry, I was. Yeah, that's okay. But as soon as you put a y in front of it, it becomes an equation. And it has an x squared in it. You see that? That x squared is what means you're going to turn around. Because think about it, at some point, if x, well, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that up. But anyways, we're moving into quadratics. But before we actually focus on quadratics, we have to talk about factoring. Factoring is my favorite part of, actually quadratics is my favorite part of algebra. But factoring is a large part of that. And um, it's, it, that also is one of my favorite parts of algebra. And so I, I love teaching this part. Unfortunately, I only have like a week left to teach you this. And um, Nate gets to teach it to you next year, most of you. Although next year we will be doing, we'll, have, we'll spend a little time together and then we're gonna give you a, competency test again and then it, you may you might not be with Nate next year you might be with me again next year it depends on how well you do on that test right? so 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 anyways that's just so so we'll we'll be dealing with that but um but so we're going to talk about factoring when we go from here back to this this is actually the factored version and this is the expanded version okay factored expanded now we're going to start simpler. We're going to start with stuff that are not necessarily quadratics. They're, we're going to start with things that are polynomials to practice our factoring first. So, okay. So, so you're teaching us how to get from the equation to the parentheses. Yes. And yes. So now the interesting thing is, I've told you it, on many occasions that to wait, the way to solve a problem that has parentheses in it is to get rid of the parentheses, right? right. You recall me saying that? Yeah. You use a distributive property, you get rid of it. This approach we're about to learn is the reverse of the distributive property. So we're going to go from expanded back to the parentheses, okay? All right? So we're going to call this, um, I'm not sure we're on here, we're going to call this a word. Factoring out the greatest common factor. GCF, greatest common factor. All right? We gotta destroy now. the greatest common factor. We do not want a common enemy. Okay. So, um, so first of all, I'm going to start with the distributive property, and then we're going to go backwards back to, right? So first of all, let's say I gave you two parentheses um, x plus 4. All right, and that, this is already in factored form. Now, what, what property is it that I've used to actually expand this out? It's distributive. So I'm going to do 2 times x and 2 times 4. So that's going to give me 2x plus 8. 2x plus 8. So technically it could be 1x plus 4. So now the goal is to go. So with factoring, factoring is the reverse of the distributive property. So we've got to go back from here, back to this. And we've got to learn the skills that we need to do to go from here back to this. Now, the skill with, that we use is we ask ourselves, remember a common factor. When they say greatest common factor, what is greatest means biggest, right? Yeah. So what's the biggest common factor? What's a factor again? A factor is a number that can be multiplied into another number, right? It's or two, Gary. The answer is two. Or divide. Yeah. So, 
So we've got two terms. We've got a 2x and we have an 8. What goes into both of them? Two. 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 Why can't you see it's 2, Dee Dee? <laughs> So what you do, when you find a common factor, you actually write that common factor down underneath it. And then you put a parenthesis. Okay? And then you have two ways to do it. You can, it, it, some of you will prefer one way and some of you will prefer the other. So I'm going to show you both ways. In fact, I'll just do it here. I'll do, I'll do it twice. So we've got two parentheses. Now on this one, we're going to divide this two out of these, okay? okay. We're dividing. So I'm going to say 2x divided by 2 is what? 1. Okay, 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then the x has to tag along because I'm not taking the x out, right? Right? The x has to tag along. I, do I need the 1 there? No. 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 I can, but I don't need it. And then plus, because there's a plus sign, and then I have to do 8 divided by 2, four which is 4. All right? So that's the divisions. This is the division wet method, right? Division method. And this is going to be called the multiplication method. And this is not a typical name, just so you know. This is just me making it up in the spot. Okay? And the way you do this one, and I use a combination of the two. Sometimes it's easier to use this method. Sometimes it's easier to use this method. I think we should get a copyright on multiplication methods. We're always allowed to say that every day. I think so. Yeah. No, but All right, this is, as I think, my understanding is as long as it's on a video, it's now copyrighted. So this is my copyrighted. And don't ever use those terms. Do you understand? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, you have to. Uh, I'll I'll say you're going to jail. So, so Gary D is going to jail. So the the multiplication method is sort of like the distributive property. Okay. So what I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say two. Jackson, look up here. D D, please stop. Look up here. Two. I'm waiting. Come on. Two times what equals two x? x. Two times x equals two x, right? See how easy that is? Two, and then there's a plus sign. Two times what equals eight? Four. 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 So it's the exact same thing. Kind it's of the same thing. It's the same. It's thing. just that in this way, I divided this so and this by two, two, and this way I multiplied this times this to get that. I, this times what to get that. This times what to get that. Okay, so you're gonna want to experiment with both of them. So now let's just try. That's all you need to know. This is it for tonight's homework. It's actually pretty easy tonight, the homework. But we just need to practice a little bit. So we're gonna do a few. Do you want to have the homework now, Gary? No, yeah. we're gonna wait, practice wait, wait, wait. it first. Can we potentially oh, no. do this with foil? I'm sorry. Foil. Can we potentially do this with foil? Oh. No. Where the foil? Be because there's we, we don't have binomial. We don't have two binomials. Foil has to have two by nine, right? Um, can you potentially do it? Actually, you could potentially do it with foil, but um, that's a, that's a, it's, it's a, we, we're not there yet. We will get there, but we're not there yet, okay? So let's try, let's try one. Let's say I have um, um, 5x plus 25. Okay, so the question is, what is common to both 5 and 25? 5. 5. So I'm going to write a 5, and then I'm going to put a parenthesis. And first we'll use our division method. 5x divided by 5 is? 5. 5 plus 5, serious. 5 divided by 5 is? 1. 1. And then the x, x tags along. I'm just going to write x. Yeah. Because 1x and x is the same thing. Plus 25 divided by 5 is? 5. 5. If I had used the multiplication method, I would have said 5 times what is 5x? 5 times x is 5x. Plus 5 times what is 25? 5 times 5 is 25. Right? Yes. Oh, so I should say, yes, 
I see. Three X so you're saying plus seventy no. Alright, so no, if I said seventy three. Well why don't we make it easy? Three X plus um, seven. Is that okay? Yeah. Seventy three, I mean I mean come on. <laughs> trying to keep it simple. Well, Gary, you know it's too early for me to think that hard, okay? So um but no, yeah. So three X plus seven, it's a great question. All right, what is my common factor that goes into both of these? One. One, one. right? One is the only number that goes into both of these. So, so that's cool. So I could, I could factor out a one, and what would I get? Three X plus seven. Oh, cool. So then I could actually factor out another one, right? I could factor out another one. One times one is three X plus seven. Oh, cool, I could factor out another one. 3x plus 7. You guys, we could do this all day. This is so fun. Let's do this all day, Gary. Let's not. So, you will forget to hand out home. So, if the, if the only common factor, guys, if the only common factor is 1, then you can't factor this any further than it already is. So, that is your answer 3x plus 7. You don't change it. Does it make sense? You don't even do this. You don't put one parenthesis 3x plus 7. It's just 3x plus 7. That's okay, it. So I thought that was going to be a movie for the rest of the day. Yeah, it could have been. It could have been. So what if it's like homework? Okay, what if it is 3x um, plus, I right. don't know. So let's, let me just try a few. Let me just try a few. You know, I think your answer like is your question is going to be The greatest common factor isn't going to be the same number. Right. So, so you, the greatest common so factor is like. Right, we'll get there. We'll get there. I'm doing a bunch of problems, just a bunch of examples. All right, so let's say I gave you, um, um, so 6x plus 8. Now, what is my greatest common factor? 2. 2. So I'm going to put a 2 here, parenthesis. Using the division method, I'm going to say 6 divided by 2 is? Three, so I'm going to put three. The x has to tag along because I'm not taking out the x. And then plus eight divided by two is four. It's a four. Pretty easy, right? Pretty easy. Hang on a sec. Uh, I did not include the heart. Okay, well, let's try a few more things. So what if I gave you this? I gave you this. Um, oh, that's a good one. Four X Y Z plus um, twenty six. No. Four goes into twenty six, doesn't it? So, so I have two terms: four X Y Z, and I have twenty six. Does four go into twenty six? No. Yeah, no. Four Eight. goes into twenty six. No, it doesn't. No. no. Yes, it does. Twenty four. Twenty four. And then it goes yeah, into twenty six. Twenty. I mean two. 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 So what's my greatest common two. factor? Two. 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 Okay. So two. Oh, that's easy. And there's nothing else that's common. So I'm gonna what's my answer? Four divided by two, or if we use our let's use our multiplication method. Two times what is four XYZ? Two x y z. Two times two x y z. And then plus the two oh times what is twenty six? Thirteen. Gary, oh my God, that's so easy, right? Oh my gosh, wow. Well. Wow. Well, Gary, you're a winner. Can we have our homework now so we can just do it and then be done? What if I gave you twelve x y equals? Um, Twelve X Y plus forty eight. Oh, twelve goes into both of them. Yeah, twelve is twelve. So one okay. X Y plus so twelve. Four. Parenthesis X Y plus four. All right. So let's see. I've got one other idea I want to try before I give you the homework. This is the five. Are you guys understanding this? Yeah. Let's do the homework now, Gary. I'm like, I'm five. Okay. How about, um, okay, 24 x Samuel, I, 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 I,
sorry, this is my lecture. I'm sorry. Whoever's screaming, please don't. <laughs> 24x plus. Um, For a second, but I'm going to leave this. Let's say we, let's say we factored something. Everybody, look up here, and the answer we got was this: eight parenthesis two x plus eight. No, what? You keep going. Oh my Sam, are you listening? Yes. If I got this, Aiden, you listening? Yes. What if I got this? Is that okay? Am I yes. done? No. No, you're not because do yeah. stuff. I have to look after I finish factoring. I have to look at what's inside the parentheses, and if there is still a greatest common factor, I'm not done yet. But it's not two; it's three. Eight times three is twenty-four. I know. I you weren't listening at that point, but I said so. I'm changing the problem. I erased that problem above, and I said, what if when you factored something, you got this, right? And, and so Better if you have that, what would you do? You just do it again, and then you multiply whatever you get on the outside times the 8. Right, that's the thing. You don't add this number to the other number you're taking out. You multiply this number times you the Can you do this division property again? So we're going to do, so we've got 8, and then times, what, are, what else are we going to take out? 2 and... 8 times 2. So I'm going to factor out the 2 now. So that gives me what? what? X plus 4. X plus, plus 4. Somebody said, oh, what? Did you understand what I'm doing? You see what I'm doing? 16x plus 1. I just noticed that I could take out a 2 out of this, so I'm just taking it out. I'm moving the 8 over a little bit. So my final answer is 16 parenthesis x plus 4. Right? Yes? Okay. So you will not have any trouble with the homework. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, never mind. I answered my own question. What was that, John? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this off.